Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville, Florida, Sports Channel Florida presents the Florida High School Activities Association 1999 Class 2A Championship. Today is the Trinity Christian Conquerors taking on the Frostproof Bulldogs for the state title in Class 2A. The teams at midfield on a rainy afternoon. It's been raining unabated all morning here in Gainesville. Trinity Christian in the blue. Frost Group, as you see, in the white. Looking for a two-way championship. And welcome, everybody, to high school football here on Sports Channel. Todd Callis, along with Brady Ackerman. Terry Norvell is battling those elements out on the field. We'll hear from him in just a little while. Let's talk about these two teams, Brady. First of all, Trinity Christian and Frostproof, two teams that don't put the ball in the air a whole lot. No, they don't. If you like smash-mouth football, you're going to see it today. Over 8,000 yards of rushing between these two teams, 3,000 yards by Frostproof, 5,000 yards by Trinity Christian. They do it on the ground, and they both do it very well, which makes for a very good matchup today. Let's talk about the roads to the championship game. First of all, we'll start with a district runner-up, Frostproof. Who has done this to get to the final? Yeah, a magical ending to a season for Frostproof getting here. A tough win over Clewis, and then the upset last week over Pace, 13 to nothing. And when you talk about Frostproof, you have to talk about one guy, and that is C.J. Hudson. Yeah, C.J. Hudson, they all do everything running back. 2,200 yards, 19 touchdowns. He's got to carry the load today against that tough Trinity Christian defense. Third in his career all time in the state of Florida in rushing yards. Let's look at Trinity Christian's road. You know, after the blowout win in the first round, knocked off. Madison County at their place, 31-27, then got over the hump finally, defeating defending state champion Bowles and then knocking off number six Williston a week ago. Now they have a trio of running backs to look at. Well, these guys are outstanding. I mean, look at these three guys. It's a three-headed monster. Over 4,600 yards and 62 touchdowns. Who do you key on? Bracey Scott or Reisinger? I don't know. They're both, all of the three of them are awfully tough. Let's talk about the two styles of these two teams. You saw the three running backs for Trinity Christian, also the stud running back for Frostproof. Let's go down to the field and hear from Terry Norvell. I'll tell you one thing, guys. Both teams have taken different roads to get here. Trinity has taken the high road. They've had a very consistent season all year. They lost the Bulls in the regular season. They came back in the playoffs and got Bulls to advance to today's championship game. Now, Frostproof, they took the low road. This club lost, get this, their final three regular season games. I don't know what happened. They got hot. I talked to the coach before the game. Something just clicked. They started to believe they've gotten very hot at the right time in the playoffs. They have reached the championship game. One game from the trophy. It doesn't matter, guys, how you get here as long as you're playing for the championship. Terry, Trinity Christians only lost one game this year. It came in the rain against Jacksonville Bulls. We'll see if Frost Group can pull up the upset in the two-way championship game from Gainesville. Back at Florida Field with the opening kickoff right after this on Sports Channel. The FHSAA Championship on Sports Channel Florida are brought to you by Dairy Farmers Incorporated. Got milk? Oh, hey, what if I want to paint the sky? Where do I find the blue? Or the red, the gold, the silver, gray, or some other sky like you? Uh, hey, Van Gogh is yellow. How you brighten up your day? I need to travel through the stars. Can you paint out the way? Say hello, where to go, whatever you want to know. Ask how, ask now. Ask Kerwin Williams. Sports Channel Florida has all five bowl games covered. Stay tuned for extensive coverage of all five bowl games when Sports Channel Florida brings viewers the Toyota Bowl Week Game Day on New Year's Day at 10 a.m. A 90-minute live preview of the Citrus, Gator, and Outback Bowl along with a review of the Micron PC Bowl. Then at 6 p.m. on January 1st, we'll bring fans a special one-hour FedEx Orange Bowl preview live from Pro Player Stadium. All this great bowl coverage exclusively on Sports Channel Florida. Watch Saturday morning college kickoff every Saturday morning at 10. Join hosts Frank Frangie, Brady Ackerman, and Terry Norville as they preview the day's college football games. It's 60 minutes of television's only pregame show focusing on Florida's college football teams. Preview the Gators, the Hurricanes, and the Seminoles, as well as reports on the University of South Florida, University of Central Florida, FAMU, and Bethune-Cookman. Saturday morning college kickoff every Saturday morning at 10, right here on Sports Channel Florida. What stands between you and your goal? Will you get into it? Or fight through it? Will you fear it? Or embrace it? Will 
you hold back. Hold nothing back. When you need something extra, when it counts the most, will it be there? Gatorade. Is it in you? If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. You got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41 and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. Hi, I'm Frank Franzi from the Franzi family and all of us here at Sports Channel Florida. Have a happy holiday season. Welcome to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville, Florida on a rainy afternoon for football. The Class 2A Championship about to kick off. Trinity Christian Academy at 13-1. The Conquerors wearing the blue with the black pants will be opposed by the Frostproof Bulldogs. Coming in with a record of 10-4. They were district runners-up, but they ended up avenging a couple of regular season losses in the playoffs under first-year head coach Bill Pierstorff. Just 28 years old, he is the youngest coach here in the Florida Finals. And on the other sideline, Berlin Stormany in his ninth year with a record of 80 and 26, but his crew has never been here to a championship game. Glad you could join us for some high school football championship style. Todd Callis along with Brady Ackerman, Terry Norvell will be braving the elements down on the field. You know, and one thing you'll see in these two games, we talked about it at the top of the show about the run games. You'll see a lot of these guys, and there's some good athletes out there now. This is Class 2A, but you'll see a lot of guys playing both ways uh, because you have to have your best athletes on the field. So there's not quite the depth that we see at 5 and 6A, but certainly there's some quality prospects in this game today. We'll watch for Bronx Group, C.J. Hudson. Only two players in the history of high school football in the state of Florida have rushed for more yards in their career than C.J. Hudson. One of them is Emmett Smith. Here's the opening kickoff. It's a low swimming kick. Taken at the 20-yard line. Moving up is Larry Burnett, a flanker, who's now all the way across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Larry Burnett with a good start for Frost Proof. Coming out to lead the Bulldogs at quarterback is Tommy Hatfield. He's a 5'9 junior. Hatfield threw for 1,153 yards this year, including 11 touchdowns. Frost proof. Will use number 28, C.J. Hudson, a whole bunch. 2,200 yards this year. If you look at Hatfield's numbers. He carries the load for him, and this is uh, an important first series, I think, for Frost proof to set the tone that they can play with Trinity. There is Hudson as he gets tackled after a gain of only about one. Let's take a look at the offensive line, which will be key today. Keith Playlock, Jeremiah Lightfleet, Rod McDowell, Bobby Lamp, and Hank Johnson. There's the man, C.J. Hudson. Also, Walter Clayton, the guy who returned the kick, Larry Burnett, Donald Rose, and Michael Irvin, 6'1", junior, tight end for the Bulldogs. And we talked a lot at the top about these two offenses in the ground game, but Trinity Christian has an awfully good defense as well. Julian Watts starting at fullback today for Frostproof in place of Clayton. Here's a pass on second down, good for about five yards before getting knocked out of bounds. That's Michael Irvin. Defensively for the Conquerors from Trinity Christian Academy. Robbie Tebow leads the team in tackles. Levi Newton, Gabriel White, the nose guard, Gerard Williams, and Fred Highsmith. Justin Reisinger, a good strong side linebacker. Mike Pomp in the middle. Karan Bracey, second on the team in tackles. The secondary, Gus Scott, Gerard Ross, Larry Solano will be in there for a while. And Josh Amos, the other starter at quarterback, along with Gerard Ross. Third down, call it a long three, maybe four. They need to get up near the 46-yard line to the Bulldogs. Right at midfield. 
Pitch back to C.J. Hudson. Hudson is pursued from behind and taken down. Good backside pursued by Mike Papa, who's only a freshman. He's only a freshman, and it's going to be tough yards today for C.J. Hudson. Trinity knows who's getting the ball every down. C.J. Hudson's their main guy, whereas Trinity has three. Guys. They've got nine guys up in the box. And as you see right there coming from his inside linebacker position, unblocked, number six, Mike Papa making the tackle. And it's going to be tough running for C.J. Hudson because already Trinity's daring them to throw early on by putting nine guys up in the box area. Back to punt, Andy Pillar gets it away and taking out his 22-yard line fumbles but recovers once again. Trinity Christians, Josh Amos, who, punted, who returned a punt for a touchdown in the semifinal victory, fumbles the initial snap, the initial punt that he sees. So the Conquerors come out on offense, led by Quarterback Gerard Ross, he's a 6'1 junior, threw for less than 800 yards this year, 14 TDs, four interceptions. He doesn't throw the ball a whole lot because wait till you see the numbers on the guys in the backfield behind him. Gus Scott, Justin Reisinger, Karan Bracey have all rushed for at least 1,400 yards each. 17 touchdowns, 19 touchdowns, 26 touchdowns for the three backs of the wing C offense. Here's one of them, this is Gus Scott. He's the leading rusher. Eight yards to and a touchdown. He gains about three on the right side on first down. Here's the offensive line for the wing C offense of the Conquerors. Levi Newton, Caleb Gregory, Jeremy Cox, Gerard Williams, and Adam Peterson. The backs and receivers, talked about them earlier, Scott, Bracey, Reisinger, those are the three key names. When they do throw, they'll go to Josh Amos or the tight end, Fred Highsmith, who also carries the ball out of that tight end position. It's going to be second down and seven, ball at the 25. The Conquerors from Trinity Christian Academy. Losing one game this year, that came to Jacksonville Falls. Avenged that loss in the playoffs. Penalty flag goes down as on the carry. Fred Highsmith, who we talked about getting a lot of carries out of that tight end spot. Gets the pitch, and there is holding called on the offensive line. Now, this is an interesting wing tee offense here that Trish, Trinity Christian runs. Yeah, they run a different type of wing tee. They will, they will run the double slot, which is, is common uh, out of the wing tee. They don't put the two backs with their hands on the back. But when they toss sweep or run the buck sweep, they run the toss. And on the other times, they will take their tight end. You see Holy Highsmith. Offense, repeat second down. Line him up next to a guard and, and flop their tackle over, meaning giving them an unbalanced look. We'll, we'll point to it as we see it. Second down and 17, ball on the 15 yard line. Penalty was holding, called against Trinity Christian. Here's a pitch back. And looking for a running room is Gus Scott. Gus Scott turns to the outside. Stays on his feet long enough to dive here. First down, but he actually stepped out of bounds inside the 30. So it'll be third down and short. For Trinity Christian. Here's that toss sweep we were talking about. Watch, they sent him in motion. Now he's catching it at full speed. Everybody's going to steal block. He follows his leading running back out there in front of him. His blocker picking up almost a first down with great effort there by Gus Scott. They will start those swing backs in motion. And when they get going full speed, they're catching the ball downhill right now. And they've got a good momentum going right at the snap of the ball. Almost Canadian football like. Third down in the short three. And off up the middle, and Reisinger falls forward for a first down. Justin Reisinger, a senior. He rushed for 1,482 yards this year in 17 scores. Yeah, he's a nice compliment from the fullback position, as you see him right there. And they overloaded the left side of the line that time Trinity did and just ran right behind the big fellows on the center, Jeremy Cox, Caleb Gregory, right up in there. It's just, you know, it's a very tough offense to defend when you have three guys averaging almost 10 yards a carry. I mean, that makes it awfully tough. Their averages are unbelievable. They're on first down. Not very much running room. Good defensive play as Mike Papa goes for a short game. Making the hit, Andy Pillar, he did not start, or Dennis Smith did not start last week. Pillar starting at end, Dennis Smith this week starting at linebacker. As you saw the defensive lineup a second ago, four frostproof, notably absent, was their leading tackler, linebacker Eric Knight, who broke a leg last week in the semifinal game. That'll be a big blow for the Bulldogs. Walter Clayton, who is second on the team in tackles, will have to be that much more important. And here's a fumble on second down and long, and there's Andy Pillar from the defensive end spot coming in for a sack. This is what Frost Creek 
Frostproof needs early on to kind of hang around in here with this powerful offense. There you see, okay, they get a break there. They've played good defense on first down. Now they get the sack. Put Trinity in long yardage situations. You still have to be disciplined on third and long, but certainly uh, Frostproof's defense has shown that it's up to the task here early on against Trinity. Third down at 18. They need to get the ball all the way to the 44. Not the kind of down and just like out of the wing seat. Back to throw. Gerard Ross in trouble. Pillar misses him. Avoids another tackle. Gets a block at the sideline. He's finally taken down from behind. Short of the first down by a solid eight yards. But a good job of scrambling by the junior quarterback, Gerard Ross. Yeah, Andy Pillar had him dead for wear. He made him miss, but it, because of the fumble on the snap before, he was only able to pick up the yards that were lost. Watch right here. The blitz coming for number 12, Andy Pillar. He's got him right there, but he doesn't wrap up. But good pursuit, good team pursuit right there by the Frostproof defense, and will force them to punch. So the key in that series was the fumbled snap and the conditions on second down, putting Trinity in long yard situation. Julian Watts finally able to come back to make the tackle for Frostproof. It is fourth and nine, a punting situation, and whistling a flag down at the 40-yard line of the Bulldogs. Officials for this afternoon's 2A championship game from Fort Walton Beach, the Miracle Strip Officials Association. Here's referee Don Denise. Good ball, illegal substitution, white, five yards. Legal substitution will cost Frostproof five yards. It'll be fourth down and four. Still a punting situation, but Coach Pierce North doesn't like that. He's only 28 years old. He played at Frostproof not a, a long time ago. He was there uh, when Coach Brandon was there, Ferris Brandon, a longtime coach of the Bulldogs. And here he is a few years later coaching the team as well in a state championship game in his very first year. Timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout as well. 7.51 to go in the first quarter. Cross group at Trinity Christian. Scoreless in the 2A championship. Separated at birth, George King would wind up living with a family that subscribed to popular fishing magazines. James went to a family that subscribed to the Wall Street Journal. As the years passed and the boys grew, George spent most of his time in front of the television, watching fishing shows, while James read the journal like a sponge, absorbing ideas, insight, and getting a real sense of the opportunities surrounding him. 28 years later, George lives at home with his parents while his brother James started a B2B web company, got mezzanine financing, and went public with a record first-day pop. Food for thought, especially since you can get 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just 57 cents a day. That's 25% off the regular subscription. Subscribe now. Call 800-334-4700. That's 800-334-4700. The Wall Street Journal. Adventures in Capitalism. Dawn breaks. It's the first day of the year 2000. Citizens are preparing for something very different, something not possible just 24 hours before. On this, the first day of the new millennium, they will be going to the 54th annual OurHouse.com Florida Citrus Bowl. See the Florida Gators take on Night Bright Michigan State, New Year's Day at 1 p.m. Get tickets now while they last. For complete bowl information, visit fcsports.com. 
We are back at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium on the campus of University of Florida. And now Trinity Christian is going to go for it and move it on the offensive line. Adam Peterson jumps. So after the timeout, Trinity Christian decides to go for it on fourth down. But now they'll probably elect to go for, for the punting unit yeah. once again. A, a costly mistake right there by Peterson on the offensive line. Trinity had made a decision. Fourth and four, they're going to go for it a lot of times. I mean, this is a team averaging 9.49 yards per carry, nine and a half yards per carry through the entire season. And, uh, you know, four yards to them is, uh, is kind of like a short yardage situation, but now they'll have to punt it away. And back to punt for Trinity Christian is Andy Davidson, number 14. Gets a good kick away. Gerard Ross back there. Walter Clayton ends up taking it, and he gets up to the 39-yard line for the Bulldogs. So there will start first and 10 from the 39. And when you look at this game, I mean, you talk about both teams are awfully good to be here, and you know that. But Frostproof is a decided underdog. Again, you said district runner-up, 6-4. and four. They got hot at the right time, which is very important, 10 and they come in 10 and 4. Obviously, Trinity's been really good for years, but could never get over the hump against Jacksonville Bulls. Finally beat them this year. Now they've won eight straight and are in here pretty much as a decided favorite, heavy favorite. But Frostproof is hanging around here in the first quarter, doing some things, winning the field position battle. The longer you play, the more confidence your kids get. Here's CJ Hudson on first down, trying the left side and not finding much real estate there. Let's go down to Terry Norvell. Okay, guys, got a quick injury update. Karan Bracey for Trinity broke a bone in his right foot in the first quarter of the last game against Williston. It was sore during the game. He played the whole game, was hobbling after the game, took an x-ray. It is broken. He told me he can play. He's in there on defense, but he is limping noticeably. Keep an eye on that injury, guys. All right, Terry, thanks a lot. There you see Karan. His brother played on that 97 team that fell just short of reaching the state championship game. Now playing up at Tulane University here. Second down and eight. Cross through back to throw. Fires over the middle. The ball is knocked away. Fine defensive play by Gerard Ross. Very fine defensive play by Gerard Ross. I like the call from the Bulldogs. The pass is there if they want to take it and if they can execute it. But Gerard Ross, outstanding coverage. Watch here now. A little skinny post over the middle of the field. Put right on the money. But Ross gets their rule. Maybe a little soon. We'll see it again. Got a little bit of the helmet. Right there. Goes over the helmet a little bit and makes the play. There you see he's calling for it. Right there at Tommy Hatfield wanting to pass interference. I think it's a pretty good call. It's pretty close. Uh, bang, bang play. A nice break on the ball right there by Gerard Ross. So third down and eight. Hatfield rolls to the right. He is under pressure. Fires deep down the middle. Complete. Larry Burnett at the 20-yard line for Nessie to 10 five touchdown. Frostproof takes the six-nothing lead on a bomb from Tommy Hatfield and Larry Burnett. Like I said before, they're giving him the pass. They have nine guys up in the box trying to stop C.J. Hudson and Tommy Hatfield to lose one defender and finds Larry Burnett for a touchdown. And an outstanding executed play right there for Frostproof. And that's what you need early on. Now watch it right here. He's going to play action. He's got one guy on him. He still has the gumption to get it out there on the post route to number 20, Larry Burnett, who also sees time on the defense as well. Wow, that, that, is, that is just what you need if you're the Frostproof Bulldog. The Bulldogs have had trouble with extra points this year. They have probably the biggest kicker you'll ever see in a state championship game, and Willie Jackson missed the extra point, critical miss there early on for Frost Group. Jackson was just 11 to 16 on point after tries this year. Watch the protection up front. This awfully good Trinity defensive line. Pretty good protection. The back right there couldn't quite get Hatfield. Couldn't quite get the defender on Hatfield, and then you see the middle route right there running away from the defender. Number one, Gerard Ross, who we just called his name. So they went right back at him after the play, and Tommy Hatfield says, yes, my man, touchdown, and we're up first. So the Bulldogs, who avenged a couple of regular season losses in the playoffs, jump on top in this 2A championship. There's the man right now, Larry Burnett, with the long touchdown reception. And the reason that is open, they tried it to play before. There's no safety in the middle of the field for Trinity. They've got... Both corners lined up on receivers, and everybody else is in the box. You talk to the Trinity coaches, they go, well, we've got three guys. They don't know who to key on, but we know who they're giving the ball to. It's C.J. Hudson. Well, 
give Coach Bill Pierce off on the other sideline a little bit of credit of knowing that Coach Dormney right there would probably come out with a with a game plan to stop C.J. Hudson and coming out and stretching the field early to loosen that defense up. Now what happens is if Trinity ends up putting a safety back there because of that success, you may see more success in the running game from C.J. Hudson. So good job by the man they call Coach B down there in Frostburg. Great kickoff there by Willie Jackson. Gets all the way into the end zone. The big fella. He may get a scally for touchback kicking. <laughs> Is that what he would get? The big fella. He missed the extra point, but well, comes through accurate. on the kickoff. 3 <laughs> 5 as we mentioned earlier. Look at him. Is that straight on? He just kind of... Put all your way to... That it. was kind of like a knockdown sandwich. He didn't really hit a full sandwich right there. He just hit a little knockdown. Now he lines up and plays on the defensive Big line. Big fella. And he plays the defensive line very well, as you'll see. Here's Willie Jackson. Good feet. Strong guy. Now at Trinity, they haven't been behind very many times this season. And uh, this is one time they need to step up and respond. Hand off to Chuck Scott. Scott on the right side. Gets tackled. Gain him about three or four. And as mentioned earlier, by Terry Norvell, Karan Bracey only playing defensively. So one of their leading rushers out of this game, Gus Scott and Justin Reisinger, will have to pick up this last. Yeah, I mean, you just took 1,400 yards and 19 touchdowns out of your equation. Uh, the equation that got you here and, 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 and now somebody has to step up and in championship games and big games the injuries happen and we you know things like that happen so someone has to step up and fill his place and off and here's one of the guys filling his place that's Fred Highsmith Highsmith lined up behind the quarterback takes the handoff and gains about three yards to be third and three for the conquerors here you'll see it's just an isolation G play right over the left side of the line and the big fella getting positive yards on second down, but again, a third and short type situation where you got to watch the center to quarterback exchange. We've already seen some trouble with it early on with Trinity. Here's a pitch back to Reisinger. Justin Reisinger needs to get to the 30, and he is wrapped up and taken down. Fine defensive play right there by James Gaines. A sophomore making a big time play for the stop on third down, forcing a fourth down. Watch this right here. Okay, they're going to run the quick Fullback sweep. They'll pull the guard out. He's looking to block the corner, but the, the safety right there, James Gaines, comes up underneath the block and makes the tackle. When you look at some of the numbers and you see how dominating Trinity Christian was this year offensively and the fact that they went to Madison County and won, went to Bowles and won, there had to be some level of intimidation coming in, whether the coaches would speak to that or not. But here early on, Frostproof is showing that they can play with this team. 6 nothing, and about to get the ball back. Almost. A uh, defensive line is jumping, but no flag is down. And now Frostproof will have great field position at their own 48-yard line. And that's what happens in big games. You talk about turnovers. There wasn't a turnover, but the fumbled snap put Trinity into a tough situation. And then the bad punt, because of the conditions, because of the rain, the field position battle right now is in Frostproof's favor. And... and Again, Trinity looks a little flat to me. And, and what happens when you play a team, an emotional game like a Bowles game and a Madison County game, games that, that you really think you can win, you forget about who you got to face in the finals. And right now, they look a little flat to me on offense. First down and 10. Guy who just threw a touchdown pass, Tommy Hatfield, will hand off this time. And taking the ball for a very low gain is the main guy, C.J. Hudson. Again, Trinity employing the defense of man coverage on the outside and bringing nine guys up in the box. So there still isn't a safety in the middle of the field. Here you see it's very it's gonna be tough yard for CJ Hudson, but what he has to do, he has to focus on holding on to the ball today, protecting the ball, and just keep pounding and pounding and pounding. And a great back like him may get a big time run against that tough Trinity defense. CJ Hudson has only had one game since his freshman year where he was stopped short of hundred yards in a game. He only has two yards on four carries so far. Hudson slips, and that'll cause a sack. Fumble, Hudson recovers. Coming in from the linebacker position to make the play. Actually, the right tackle, Sherrod Williams. Yeah, this guy, he's, a, he's definitely a prospect. If you look at him, he's got quickness and he's got size. Watch him there at the top of your screen, slicing through the offensive line, getting pressure. And this time, Mr. Hatfield was unable to get away from the Trinity defense. And he's going to see pressure all day. That's going to be the key. We, 
He even got pressure on the touchdown. I mean, this defensive line is going to be awfully tough to block, but he's got to be smart with the football. Don't throw it up. Don't fumble it or make bad decisions, and that, that, that'll keep you around for a while. Third down and long all the way to the 42. Frostproof needs to go. The handoff up the middle and gaining some tough yards as Richard land on third and long, so the Bulldogs will punt it away. Yet neither of these teams like to be in third and long situations. And, and we've talked so much about the running game of Trinity. Frostproof ran for almost 3,000 yards as well as a team. So these teams aren't used to being in third and long situations. They've had a lot of success running the football on first and second down. So they're, you know, they're not usually in those situations. So when you get them in there, it's awfully tough. Punt it away. Josh Amos calls for the fair catch. Makes it at his own 24-yard line. Frostproof leading 6 0, 235 to go in the first quarter. There you see the head coach from Trinity Christian Academy, Vernon Verlin Dormany, in his ninth year. Record of 80 and 26 has the Steve State Championship for the first time ever. Let's head down to the field. It's Terry Norvell. Okay, guys, what about this story? I'm with Pam Maddox, wife of Frostproof assistant coach Benji Maddox. Now, the kicker is you've been Pam Maddox for about seven hours. You guys got married at 7 30 this morning. Tell me about it. Yes, it was originally supposed to be at 9 o'clock, but we had to move it up for the game at 7.30 this morning. So we could catch our catch the game, plus go catch our plane. <laughs> okay, Trinity's running their first play, first and 10 from the 24, and a couple yards gain here. But guys, here's the kicker. Their wedding was scheduled for 9 a.m. anyway because of travel plans for their honeymoon. Because of this game, they move it to 7.30 at her mother's house they get married. What I had to ask the question was, did husband ask you could we move it to 7 30 or did he tell you well actually it's my idea <laughs> to move it to 7 30. So well, how about that guys what a great girl she'll never let a football game and a wedding you know cause problems she knows where her priorities and i guess her paychecks coming from <laughs> <laughs> thanks terry unbelievable story uh, coaches wives they know they know what they're getting into before they get into it it's a it's a grind Look it down, Terry, and bouncing off tacklers and getting the first down is Gus Scott, the 5'11 senior. With Bracey out, this is the guy I think has got to step up right now and, and, and get a big play and get that momentum going for Trinity, pick him up over there. They're kind of standing around waiting for somebody to make a play. And as you'll see right here, Gus Scott, I think, is the guy. Look at him, break one tackle right there and drive his feet. A good running back always keeps his feet moving at impact, and that's what Gus Scott does. I think he's got to carry some load here. I know they like to think... You know, Trinity likes to say, well, we, we don't just rely on one guy, but if there is one guy that needs to step up in the championship game, I think it's Gus Scott. In motion goes Scott. They hand up the middle to Reisinger, and he is upended on a fine tackle right in the middle of the defense. And that was a play made by Dennis Smith. And you'll see so many of those motion plays. That's a good play right there. For Frostproof, but what you'll see is so many motions from Trinity, and sometimes they give them the ball, and sometimes they don't. So your linebackers got to be extremely disciplined for Frostproof. Take it down, call it seven. Pitch back, looking for running room, and not finding any. Is just Scott. Gus Scott can take it down after a loss of a couple. Gang tackled in there, Andy Pillar, along with other Bulldogs. Let's take a look at it. Now, there's the motion. This time, they're going to toss it to him. They like to get the running backs going downhill. But that play was called by, caused by Michael Rose, number four, the defensive end, outside linebacker for Frostproof. He basically stood up the lead block of Reisinger and forced the running back to have to go outside, and then it, he got help from the defensive line. Third down and long. It'll be third down and long nine for the Conquerors. Another fumble, this time picking it up quickly, but going under a swarm of Bulldogs is Sarah Gross. Three or four frostproof defenders in there for the group sack, and that'll force another punt. And early on, with the weather conditions and with some solid defense, frostproof stopping the Trinity Christian Academy Conquerors. That is the final play of the first quarter. We're through one in the Class 2A state championship. It's Trinity Christian trailing. Frostproof six, Trinity Christian nothing.
100% pure Florida orange juice. Pure energy! Are you drinking it up? Look into my crystal ball. I can see your future. Your future looks very bright. Sports Channel Florida has solidified its commitment to Florida sports by reaching an agreement with the Marlins, Devil Rays, and Panthers to be their exclusive cable TV home past the year 2010. As Florida's first and only 24-hour all-sports network, we look forward to sharing many years together with our teams and our fans. For now and the future, Florida's teams play here. Dawn breaks. It's the first day of the year 2000. Citizens are preparing for something very different, something not possible just 24 hours before. On this, the first day of the new millennium, they will be going to the 54th annual OurHouse.com Florida Citrus Bowl. See the Florida Gators take on Night West Michigan State, New Year's Day at 1 p.m. Get tickets now while they last. For complete bowl information, visit FCSports.com. What if you lived in a home on an island you couldn't leave? With limited amounts of food and safe drinking water. It would be very important to use only what you need. Well, it doesn't matter where your home is, because we all live on an island we can't leave. We are back for the 2A state championship game between Frost Proof and Trinity Christian. And so far, it's been the Bulldogs in a defensive battle. This is one of those old-style kind of games. Both teams mm -hmm. like to keep it on the ground with the weather conditions the way they are, and the field will probably get chewed up a little bit. One of those games when you come out in the third and fourth quarter, you don't see much white on those uniforms if you're Frost Proof. Here's a shank punt on fourth down and 14 right at midfield. Bad punt there by the Academy as Andy Davidson hit it off the side of his foot. So Frost Proof will have first and 10 right near midfield. You're talking about a Trinity team in the playoffs has averaged 40 points per game in the playoffs. They've played number one, number two, and number six, and they're averaging 40 points per game, and Frostproof shuts them out in the first quarter. So here we go on first down and 10 as they switch sides of the field. Frostproof moving to our left. C.J. Hudson, the star running back from Frostproof, held to just two yards in the first quarter on four carries. They fake to Hudson, now roll out, open receiver down the right side momentarily, the throw is incomplete. Intended for Grover Benton, who had a big catch in the semifinal game, but incomplete. And again, you're seeing what you talked about earlier, Brady. They bunch up the, the line, and some of these receivers might have some room. Yeah, they really do. And this is a very well-designed play. Watch it. It looks like a run formation, a tight end and a wingback. He play actions, release the tight end down the middle, and the wingback on the wheel route. Good coverage, though, right there. Good discipline by number three, Gus Scott, not coming up on the play pace. But, so but a very well-designed play, and what you try to do early, like we talked about, stretch the defense to try to open some running lanes for C.J. Hudson. Tommy Hatfield showing he's not afraid to throw it a few times. Here is Hudson, and he is buried. He was hit and driven back by... The middle of the defensive line for Trinity Christian and getting up off the bottom of the pile is big Levi Newton. The big fella, defensive tackle number 79, Levi Newton. Watch him right here now. It's an isolation play. He gets too much penetration. And wow. That was impressive. Trinity Christian held Williston in the playoffs to negative three yards rushing. You combine that with going against C.J. Hudson, who never gets held under 100 yards. Something has to give Yeah, that. and Williston had Marlon Brown, who was averaging almost 180 yards a game going into that game. Back to throw under pressure. Back to the fumble. Trinity Christian tries to fall on it. The ball is loose, and we'll have to wait till they unpile. Number 53, Sherrod Williams, had a great chance to recover that ball. We'll see if he came up with it for Trinity Christian. No, he did not. Wow, that's a huge break for Frostproof. The pressure from that defense now. They've turned it up a notch on defense, the Conquerors have. They are coming after the quarterback. He drops back to pass, a little half roll, and there you see number six, the freshman coming in on the blitz from his middle linebacker position, Mike Pompa, causing the fumble, but they were unable to come down when the Sherrod Williams was in there. It looked like he had it, but Frostproof came out of the bottom of the pile with it. 
So the Bulldogs will punt back to the Conquerors, trying to field it. I'm not sure. I think he might have touched that ball. That ball should be free. Josh Amos touched the ball on the bounce. We'll have to wait and see. Gus Scott, I think, came up with it. Gus three. Scott. Yep. Great call, but yeah, good. That wasn't very smart there on Josh Amos. That's a tough putt to handle. Here you see. Well, the one thing I do like about it was the fact that he tried to come up and catch it. Uh, he just waited too late to do it. We see so many times returners not even making an effort to come up and catch it, fair catch it, and then it rolls another 10 or 15 yards. So I understand what he was trying to do. I just think he got a late start on that one, Josh Amos right there, and uh, almost a huge turnover. And in these conditions and the way these defenses are playing right now, every turnover could be huge. First and 10 for Trinity, trailing 6 nothing. This is a Conquerors team that put up points by the bunches this year, but so far shut out in the first half. First down, Gus Scott. He's maybe one or two. So far, the Bulldogs' defense has been very solid. You look at the regular season numbers, this team was putting up 60, 63, 50, 55, 54. Their one loss to Jacksonville, they put up 21. Then 52, 54, 66, and 51. Every game over 50 points, with the exception of their one loss, and then the playoffs, they event that loss to the Jacksonville Bulls team. Well, the substitute right now for Gracie has been Mike Pump, the freshman. There he goes, in motion, and a handoff up the middle of the right finger. Right finger is hit first by Dennis Smith. Remember, Smith is in there, filling in for their leading tackler, Eric Knight, who broke his leg last week. And to give you a, a, an idea of the difference in Pompa and Bracey, Pompa has 31 carries on the season. He did average nine yards a carry. Bracey, 141. So the experience factor is what you're missing right now. And if you're a team that uses all three guys equally and you take one of those cogs out, it's going to hurt, hurt you for a while. Third down, back to throw Gerard Rock. The throw is caught at the 30-yard line. Fine play there. By Gus Scott to make the catch for a first down. Conquers left first and 10 at their own 30. And that was good coverage right there by the Bulldogs, but Trinity was able to stick it in there. Here you'll see him right here dropping back the pass, and he puts a little extra mustard on it on the little out route. Good catch right there. That is, that's outstanding hands right there by number three, Gus Scott. Shannon Benton doing a good job in coverage as well. First down and 10. Trinity Christian with the handoff. This is Gus Scott who just made that catch. Scott gaining him seven, maybe eight, maybe even nine yards by the time he falls forward. Gus Scott, 26 touchdowns, 1,760 yards in the regular season plus the playoff. Yeah, here you go. Watch. Going to pull both guards right at you. First one's going to kick out. The next one's going to lead up in the hole, getting a good job right there on the block on Grover Benton. James Gaines having to make a lot of tackles here early on. Very active, but Gus Scott, that was just well-executed blocking and a good job of Gus Scott following your blockers. Great running back, follow the block. Here's another senior running back, Reisinger looking for room and getting tripped up on second down and short. Reisinger, Gus Scott, Fred Highsmith, Karan Bracey, all senior running backs playing their final high school game in this championship. It'll be a holding call against Trinity Christian, so that will hurt on uh, second down and short, all of a sudden becomes second down and long. Yeah, that really hurts. And, and, and Trinity's made some mistakes here early on. I mean, they've had to fumble snaps twice, uh, a couple of penalties as well. So they put themselves in bad situations Holding early on offensively. Blue, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. So it'll be second and a long 10 for Berlin Dominic's team. Berlin has not been here before, so he had a chance Talk to the great coach from Union County who's been here so many years, Robbie Pruitt, to say what exactly is it like to in the championship game. And coach Pruitt gave him some good advice. Before the play, we have whistles and flags, and see what the call is down on the field. Dead ball, false start on blue. Two second down. And there it is again, shooting themselves in the foot, and Coach Dormany right now has got to be wondering what's going on with his offense. It's not so much, it's a combination of two things. One, Frostproof is playing very well in the front seven area. 
making tackles, making it tough on the run. But they're also shooting themselves in the foot with penalties that are putting them in situations that uh, they're not accustomed to being in. And now you got to find out how your kids will react. What well, was second down and less than the yard is now second down and 15. Pass is headed for Gus Scott incomplete. Scott had eight catches on the year for 200 yards. He's the third leading receiver on this team that keeps the ball on the ground almost exclusively. Yeah, they've already thrown it more in this fir first half than they normally throw it in a whole game. And there you go. That's a nice throw. Hit him right in the hands, but he couldn't come up with it. Gerard Ross throws it. Nice ball right in there, but Gus Scott couldn't come up with it. And now you're in third and long situation. And right now, everything's going in the way of the Frost Proof Bulldogs. They have to get all the way up to the 40 yard line on third down. Throw, high spin, complete, six, one tackle. Tries to elude another, but he is stripped up. Good play by Shannon Benton to prevent the first down. And another punting situation as Trinity Christian is not used to punting away three or four times in the first half. And I'm not sure how many times Gerard Ross has passed in this game, but this has to be more than the actual game plan coming in. As you see him, he has to dump it off. Good coverage down the field by the Bulldogs. Has to dump it off to his tight end, and that won't be enough for a first down. But I, I, I just think they have really gotten away from what they do well early on here already, and, and that's a little bit of a surprise. I don't know if that was a game plan thing or forced by the injury to break. Good punt will bounce, and getting away from it at the last moment was Walter Clayton. And now it'll take another good roll all the way to the 17-yard line. Fine punt by Andy Davidson coming back after a tough punt his last time, so good job to regroup. Talking about the team never playing in a state championship game, and the coach was on us beforehand, Vernon, uh, Berlin Dormany. He said, hey, we were a little tight early on Monday morning. The whole coaching staff was a little tight. He talked to Robbie Pruitt out of Union County and said, just relax, be yourself, go out and have some fun. Yeah, and one other reason you're tight is, is the fact that, that you're the favorite as well. I mean, you're expected to win hands down. Not many people across the state in the media and in the area and the coaches have given Frostburg much of a chance in this game, but right now, Coach P's got him playing. DJ Hudson on the pitch. Takes it for a couple of yards. He has had not a lot of running room. He's used to finding some room and making some cuts. And so far today, it's been tough going for the third leading rusher in the history of the state of Florida. And it's very tough to rush against this Trinity defense. The entire season through 14 games, they're averaging giving up 74 yards a game. So something's got to give. But if you're C.J. Hudson, you just keep plowing away, you know, trying to maybe hit a big one sooner or later. Second down and eight. Five and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Ross Cruz leading 6 nothing. Hand off to the fullback. Doesn't get very far. Richard Land maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage. Trinity's defense has settled down a little bit. They gave up the big pass play for a touchdown. They might have been a little rattled, but since then they've been pretty dominant. And then, and that's what you need. When your offense is struggling, you need your defense to step up, maintain its dominance, control the lines of scrimmage, until hopefully that high-powered offense for you, for your squad, kicks in. Third down and eight. Back to throw Hatfield, dumps it off for Hudson, just a little bit too far in front, almost intercepted as coming up out of the secondary was Karan Bracey. Yeah, I think Hudson was here in footsteps from big number two, Karan Bracey. I think he was here in footsteps, decided I won't take that one. But again, pressure from the front five. Here you go. Look at the pressure coming at him right in his face. He just does a little swing pass out there. Here does footsteps coming. And uh, I don't think C.J. Hudson wanted any part of Karan Bracey on that point. Mike Papa, Robbie Tebow providing good pressure. Andy Pillar with the punt. Fair yeah. catch. Good kick. Fair catch made by Josh Amos. So from the 47-yard line, Trinity Christian will set up first down at 10. We take a timeout right here with 4.44 to go. It's frostproof leading Trinity Christian 6-0. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. you got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, 
strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41 and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. The King Brothers, separated at birth. George King would wind up living with a family that subscribed to popular fishing magazines. James went to a family that subscribed to the Wall Street Journal. As the years passed and the boys grew, George spent most of his time in front of the television, watching fishing shows while James read the journal like a sponge, absorbing ideas, insight, and getting a real sense of the opportunities surrounding him. 28 years later, George lives at home with his parents, while his brother James started a B2B web company, got mezzanine financing, and went public with a record first day pop. Food for thought, especially since you can get 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just 57 cents a day. That's 25% off the regular subscription. Subscribe now. Call 800-334-4700. That's 800-334-4700. The Wall Street Journal. Adventures in capitalism. Sports Channel Florida has all five bowl games covered. Stay tuned for extensive coverage of all five bowl games when Sports Channel Florida brings viewers the Toyota Bowl Week Game Day on New Year's Day at 10 a.m. A 90-minute live preview of the Citrus, Gator, and Outback Bowl along with a review of the Micron PC Bowl. Then at 6 p.m. on January 1st, we'll bring fans a special one-hour FedEx Orange Bowl preview live from Pro Player Stadium. All this great bowl coverage exclusively on Sports Channel Florida. Hi, I'm John Jemmy. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you and yours a happy holiday season from all of us here at Sports Channel. Welcome back to the Class 2A Championship. From Gainesville, direct snap back to Gus Scott. Flag down and Scott goes nowhere. Well, trying to snap it to your best breakaway athlete, and uh, Frostproof, again, is playing very sound defense. I mean, Coach Pierskoff should be awfully proud of the way his defensive staff has put a plan together against this Trinity offense in the first half. And on top of that, Trinity's helping him a little bit with some penalties. But his defense is playing very disciplined, staying home, reading their keys, wrapping up, and that's what you do against a great offense that uh, Coach Dormany has there at Trinity Christian. I mean... Once you get over the size factor and the team being, one team being big and the other one, it comes down to fundamentals. And if you coaches put them in the right position to make plays, the kids have to make plays. And sometimes the offense makes more plays so the defense doesn't look as good. But right now, Foster's defense has been in position to make plays and they've executed that and made it, made the plays for them. So every once in a while, Trinity Christian will go to this no quarterback set, the single wing where you have a direct snap taken, and Gus Scott takes a direct snap, and he goes forward, breaks the tackle, midfield, he could be gone, one man to beat, and great tackle from behind by the sophomore, Shannon Benton. A touchdown saving tackle by Shannon Benton. But that's what, as, as you were saying, Todd, right here, the one quarterback set, the little single wing set, they just snap it right. Look at that athletic ability by Gus Scott. Snap it right to him, and he goes right up the middle of the defense of the Bulldogs. And now Trinity's got something going here late in the first half. And I said earlier, I thought Gus Scott, number three, had to make some plays with his partner in crime, Bracey, out. On offense, at least, he's playing defense with a bad ankle, but is out on offense. With wet conditions and wet uniforms, that is a tough tackle by Shannon Benton. Great run by Gus Scott. You can see his speed, but Benton made one last gasp, but for the time being, at least it saved six points. Good effort. I mean, that's coaching and effort. There you see the missed tackle. You tell your kids you don't give up on any play. You play as hard as you can the whole play. Don't give up anything because you might get a stop here. So that's a good effort good coaching. And here's another stop, this time on first down, up the middle. 
Not going very far was the sophomore Mike Poppett. He'll set up second down and eight after the gain of two by Trinity Christian. So the Conquerors, 13 and one coming in, putting up points by the boatload, and now they come out here and don't score a point in the first half. You say boatload, you're talking about boatload, truck load, shipyard load. They've been putting up so many points. It's unbelievable. Any mode of transportation. Here's the direct <laughs> snap back to Scott. Scott gets inside the 20. Gang tackle to 17. The one thing I like about what Frostproof's doing, they get, look how many white shirts are around the football. Uh, and Gus Scott obviously looks like the guy who's going to carry most of the load right now for this Trinity Christian offense. But watch how many white shirts get to the ball right here. Okay, they can direct snap it to him. This isn't one guy. There's one, two, three, four, five. And here comes another one in six guys. Make it seven. There comes another one. So that's what you want. Seven guys rallying to the ball. Defensive coordinators like to say, roll call at the ball. I'm taking Nate. Here goes Scott again. This time following his lead block of Larry Solano. Scott needed to get to the 14. He's very close. 245 and counting remaining in the first half. And they're going to spot it just outside the first down mark. Yeah, this is a, like an isolation play. All they do really is follow his fullback lead instead of the quarterback handing it to him. It's a direct snap, and he knows where the first down marker is, but he comes up just a little short, which is surprising. I mean, this is a guy averaging almost 12 yards of carry. And remember, he's played Madison County, Bowles twice, Williston. He seems a pretty good defense. They have silly offensive numbers. They're almost unbelievable. They're so strong. Here's another snap. Fourth down, going for it. First down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for the Conquerors. I think Tiller made the game, well, the touchdown saving tackle right there, number 12. But again, the workhorse right now. And, and it, it's very evident that this is the guy that's going to carry the load for him. And, there you see him breaking one tackle. Tiller coming from his backside linebacker spot or end spot, saving the touchdown. 12 carries, 94 yards for Scott. Now it's a fumble and in some trouble in the backfield. Scott goes down. That ball might have hit the lead fullback, Larry Solano, on the way to Scott. You're exactly right, my man. They were going to try to run a lead the other way. Here's the problem with it. They set the fullback to the right. Watch, he's set to the right, they're going to read the lead to the left. He's got to wait until that snap goes. Either that or you need to set the fullback to the left. They were trying to uh, run an isolation play. Now they put themselves in second and long, and they continue to shoot themselves in the foot. They continue to do it. They were going to try to trick up the frostproof defense by lining the fullback up on the right, but run it to the left. But he has got to wait till that snap goes. He got too much of a hurry, and that puts him in some situation. Now they bring the quarterback back. Ross, he hands off to Reisinger up the middle. Reisinger gains only about three or four on second and goal from the 19. Oh, trickery on this play. They, they, they snap it to the quarterback, and they're going to run the wing back here, 19. Watch, they're going to pull the line behind him. The tackle and the guard are pulling, and they're just going to hand it to him right there. But again, good disciplined defense by the Bulldogs from Coach Pearsoff. Dennis Smith with his tackle, number five. Staying home at his right end position, outside linebacker position in that 50 front, and doing uh, exactly what he's coached to do. And that's, that. when you have a team that does all this direction and motion, Todd, you have to play your keys and you have to stay home. You can't be overly aggressive, and that's what the Bulldogs have done. Besides the one big play by the man, Gus Scott, they played at, uh, pretty well, pretty disciplined here in the first half. Berlin Dormany talking to his group right now, trailing 6 nothing, but driving for the tying touchdown. Tune in to Sports Channel on New Year's Day at 10 o'clock for Toyota Bowl Week Game Day, a live 90-minute special devoted to the Orange Gator Citrus Outback at MicronBC.com Bowl. Then at 6 o'clock, it's the FedEx Orange Bowl Preview, your source for all the pregame hype of Florida's premier bowl game. Don't miss any of the action right here on Sports Channel Florida. My partners, Brady Ackerman, Jerry Norvell, will be part of that show as we look forward to game day on New Year's Day. Right here, third down and goal for Trinity Christian. And a direct snap to Scott, but movement on the line. And we're going to have Trinity Christian push back five more yards. And Coach Dormany, I don't think, has seen his team play like this all year long. Well, they're playing like a team who hasn't been in a state championship game and hasn't been in this Football. atmosphere right now. Ball start. Blue. Third down. Too many mental mistakes 
by that man's team right now. They need to just settle down, play within themselves. It's only a six to nothing game for all the mistakes they've made on offense. Uh, their defense has played pretty well since the one big play. So certainly when they get to halftime here shortly, there you see six penalties. That's way too many for Coach Dormley right there. He's going to have to get them in at halftime, settle them down, tell them to relax. It's a four-quarter ball game when you play in the state championship, and uh, they just need to cut out the mental mistakes. There's a fumble on a direct snap to Chuck Scott. He is in a whole bunch of trouble, taken down, leading the tacklers. Julian Watts, about four of his teammates swarm in. Wow, this frostproof defense is putting on a show. They were giving up some yards with the single wing, and all of a sudden, a couple of mistakes, and they shut it down. See, right there, Gus Scott was looking where he was going to run with it before he got the snap, and that caused the fumble. The pressure coming from Frostproof. Frostproof had the blitz on, and he was looking where he was going to run before he caught the snap. And uh, they're, they're, although they've had some success with him back there in that quarterback position, catching it and running it, it has really gone in the wrong direction right here. And I, I just question why you get away with what you normally do. I know you've done this and had success with this uh, throughout the season. Uh, in your package, but when they've had Gracie and Reisinger and Gus Scott in there, and you've got Gerard Ross turning around and handing it to these guys and motioning it, you've churned up most of your offense, and I, I just, I wonder why you would go to that. I understand you want to get it to your best athlete on the field right now in Gus Scott, uh, but the conditions are wet, and shotgun snaps, remember, this is, a, <laughs> this is yeah. a running team. This is not a team who gets five wide and throws every time. Gus Scott couldn't possibly, I, I don't have the entire statistics or, or, or the availability to see all 14 games, but he, he couldn't have taken more than 100 snaps the entire year at the quarterback position in the shotgun. So The shotgun is always a tricky thing, and especially with conditions like we have today. Yeah, and he has 141 carries on the year, so certainly probably done half of the less than half of those are in the shotgun what do you have for us terry now oh, we'll go to terry after this play fourth down and goal to go from the 30. gerard ross back in there we saw karan bracy on a play earlier but he is not in there on this set ross to throw under some heat taken down 73 willie jackson the guy who serves as kicker and defensive lineman 305 pounder gets the sack willie jackson will get the sack but credit Grover Benton, Shannon Benton, James James, and Julian Watts, the secondary, a coverage sack as well, as everyone was covered when he made his initial read right there. And then the big fella, 73, Willie Jackson, comes in and cleans it up for the sack. Boy, that was close to being a fumble. Six seconds remaining in the half. As it turns out, it was fourth down, so the ball would have turned over either way, and Frost Proof will just take a knee and go into halftime with a six-point lead. 6-0, the Frostproof Bulldogs. Losers of four games in the regular season, all the way to the state championship, and now, at halftime, they will carry a 6-0 lead against an offensive power, the Trinity Christian Conquerors, who just couldn't get on track today with a lot of mistakes, a lot of penalties, and they are going to have probably an interesting talk from Berlin Dormany in the locker room at halftime. Trinity Christian won at Madison County, at Bowles, and now they have picked the wrong time to play their worst half of football in 1999. Our own Terry Norvell is down on the field, and he's going to have a word with the Trinity Christian Academy head coach. Terry, go ahead. Okay, I'm with Coach Dormany. Coach, first half really struggled on offense until that last drive, and then you really shot yourself in the foot there. And we've been shooting ourselves in the foot the whole half. You know, we've got too many penalties. We're not executing like we ought to, but uh, we're going to regroup, come back out second half. And get out. Quickly, I noticed uh, Karan Bracey goes into the offensive huddle a little bit at the end. Is that the thought? Maybe he has to go with that bad foot on offense as well as defense? I don't know. He, he, he can't, he's not have much speed on it right now, so we, and we'll test him and see. Okay, guys, there's something to look forward to maybe in the second half. Maybe Bracey has to go in and tough it out on offense as well as defense for Trinity. Back to you. All right, Terry, and you, you've heard some halftime talks before, Brady. That could be an interesting mm -hmm. talk there. He's going in to <laughs> get, get some motivation going. I can promise you that. We'll find out if it works for him. We'll come back with more at halftime from Gainesville right after this. Join us for another exciting clash at this year's MicronPC.com Bowl. December 30th marks another great college football climax as the ACC and the Big Ten claw their way to Pro Player Stadium in the hopes of a postseason bowl victory. Game time is 7 p.m. and tickets are on sale at all Ticketmaster locations and at Pro Player Stadium. Reserve your seat today 
and enjoy great local events, such as the Midway Airlines Beach Bash and U.S. Army Team Welcome Reception. There are hundreds of reasons to buy a new Nissan Frontier Crew Cab today. Here are four. Crew Cab's powerful V6 toasts 5,000 pounds. Crew Cab seats five people comfortably with a bed to carry your gear. Right now, get 5.9% financing for 60 months and make no payments till 2000. And the fourth reason? Four real doors, no real rivals. Nissan Frontier Crew Cab. What are you waiting for? Visit your nearest Nissan retailer today. Watch Saturday morning college kickoff every Saturday morning at 10. Join hosts Frank Branchy, Brady Ackerman, and Terry Norville as they preview the day's college football games. It's 60 minutes of television's only pre-game show focusing on Florida's college football teams. Preview the Gators, the Hurricanes, and the Seminoles, as well as reports on the University of South Florida, University of Central Florida, FAMU, and Bethune-Cookman. Saturday morning college kickoff every Saturday morning at 10, right here on Sports Channel Florida. I'm Ned Smith, host of Sunday Morning NFL. For the past four years, Sunday Morning NFL has been the cornerstone of Sports Channel Florida's Sunday morning program. We're up early before the alphabet letter networks are, bringing you the latest on the Miami Dolphins, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. You want to know the latest about Mark Brunel, Dan Marino, Trent Dilfer, join Dave Wood, Jonathan Jimmy, Frank Frangy, and myself as we bring you a live 90 minutes of Sunday Morning NFL right here on Sports Channel Florida. What if your family lived in a home on an island you couldn't leave? With limited amounts of food and safe drinking water. It would be very important to make things last, wouldn't it? Especially if your family kept growing and growing and growing. Well, it doesn't matter where your home is, because we all live on an island we can't leave. So please, use only what you need, because supplies truly are limited. We can do that. Back in Gainesville at halftime of the Class 2A Championship, Bronx Group leading Trinity Christian 6 to nothing at the half. And welcome back. Now, Trinity Christian, we know, can score a whole lot of points, Brady, but so far today, we haven't seen that offense we expected. Yeah, and it's a combination of things, and it starts with Frost Cruz's defense. They played very sound in the first half, done some good things on defense, stopping that running game. Bracey's out. Gus Scott's having to carry the load. Turnovers and penalties. Coach Dormy's going to have to go back in there at halftime for Trinity Christian, rally the troops, but give credit where credit is due in the first half. Frost Cruz's been awfully good on defense. Let's take a look at the highlights that have us at 6 nothing at the half. Frost Cruz's scoring first, and they do so with a pass. Tommy Hatfield going back and avoiding a sack. Yeah, give credit to Hatfield right here. He avoids the sack and gets the ball down the middle in the field to a wide open receiver right there for the touchdown. And if you take an end zone look at it again, there is no, no safety in the middle of the field right here. Good protection up front in the middle. He does have to avoid the sack right there, but Hatfield showing some athletic ability and poise and no safety in the middle of the field. A good call by Coach P and his staff right down there at Frostproof getting the early touchdown against Trinity Christian. Larry Burnett with the score, making it 6 0. They missed the extra point. Now, Trinity Christian was having all kinds of trouble offensively. They went to the single wing, and Gus Scott almost turned it into a touchdown. Yeah, they, he really did. And this is all they've got right now. Gus Scott trying to make plays. He's been their best athlete, their, their leading rusher all season long. And they get him back in the quarterback position and snap it to him. And this was a huge tackle right here at the end by Shannon Benton to save a touchdown. That drive did not result in points for Trinity Christian. We'll be back with more at the half. We'll take a look at some halftime numbers as well. Frost Proof leading the number three team in Class 2A, Trinity Christian, 6 nothing at the half. The Lexus, December to Remember sales event. Honey, you got to see this. Okay. You'll find values you never believed possible. You like it? Okay. <laughs> the December to Remember sales event ends January 3rd. Missing it. You'll definitely spoil the surprise. 
सी और साउथ कोर्ट और मैक्सिस डी clash at this year's Micron PC.com Bowl. December 30th marks another great college football climax as the ACC and the Big Ten claw their way to Pro Player Stadium in the hopes of a postseason bowl victory. Game time is 7 p.m. and tickets are on sale at all Ticketmaster locations and at Pro Player Stadium. Reserve your seat today and enjoy great local events such as the Midway Airlines Beach Bash and U.S. Army Team Welcome Reception. The Dolphins are primed for a Super Bowl run. And the best way to be a part of the action is by joining the Dolphin Club, the official fan club of the Miami Dolphins. With four levels of excitement, the Dolphin Club can help satisfy every Dolphin's needs. Each level will come with a shirt, special gifts, collectibles, and every member receives 10% off at the Dolphins Pro Shop. Don't be left on the sidelines. To join, call 800-334-4005. That's 800-334-4005. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. you got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own, and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results, and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. In a bit of a surprise in the 2A championship at the half, Brock Proof leading Trinity Christian 6 to nothing. Welcome back. Now, Trinity Christian, during this playoff run, Brady, they go to Madison County, who had won 27 straight at home. They get a win. They went to Bowles, who hadn't lost a playoff game at home since, like, the early 80s. They get a win. So, Prosper could have been intimidated, but here they are seeing them live and in person. They have to feel pretty good going into the half. Yeah, and it's a neutral site, and they do have to feel pretty good. You don't win four straight playoff games in the FHSAA and get to the championship game without a team that believes in themselves. And they've got a lot of confidence right now. They're two quarters away from pulling a huge upset here in the 2A state title game. Let's take a look at some of the numbers at the half. C.J. Hudson has been shut down completely in this game. Yeah, I mean, one thing you can say about Trinity Christian, their defense is held in there. Except for the big pass play they gave up early on, they stopped the run and shut down C.J. Hudson. But the big stat right there is penalties. Too many penalties for Trinity Christian, and that's the difference right now. That's why the number three ranked team, the Trish Trinity Christian Academy Conquerors, are trailing at the half 6 nothing. We'll be back with the second half kickoff right here on Sports Channel Florida. It is more than a trial by fire. It is a rite of passage. And if you can master your fear, outsmart your enemy, and never yield even to yourself, you will be changed forever. The few, the proud, the Marines. Take a good look at Dodge Durango. You'll find it has the most available towing of any vehicle in its class. The most cargo room of any vehicle in its class. And it's the only one in its class that offers eight passenger seats. So while Durango is out doing everything, it's also out doing everything. Dodge Durango, different.
the race for the holidays with the new Extreme Race Pack. You'll get seven of the best race games for the price of six, including the Rays' April 7th home opener against the Indians. Plus, get a free baseball cap, compliments of Mountain Dew. Call 888-FAN-RAYS today. It's show. There's power on that field. Raw power you can feel every time Buscelli mauls his opponent. Or Hardy devours a running back. And Taylor makes another punishing run. Oh, there's power in those big cats on the field. But you can only feel it when you're in the jungle. Order your Jaguar season tickets today. Call 800-618-8005 and get in the game. The King Brothers, separated at birth, George King would wind up living with a family that subscribed to popular fishing magazines. James went to a family that subscribed to the Wall Street Journal. As the years passed and the boys grew, George spent most of his time in front of the television, watching fishing shows, while James read the journal like a sponge, absorbing ideas, insight, and getting a real sense of the opportunities surrounding him. 28 years later, George lives at home with his parents, while his brother James started a B2B web company, got mezzanine financing, and went public with a record first day pop. Food for thought, especially since you can get 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just 57 cents a day. That's 25% off the regular subscription. Subscribe now. Call 800-334-4700. That's 800-334-4700. The Wall Street Journal, adventures in capitalism. The Class 2A championship about to kick off in the second half. Frostproof leading the number three ranked team, Trinity Christian, six to nothing as we get ready for the third quarter. Let's go down to the field right now and join Terry Norvell. All right, thanks, guys. With Bill Pierstor from Frostproof. Coach, you hit a big pass early, and then your defense is taken over in the first half. Well, I don't think six points are going to be enough against a team like this. I mean, you saw a little burst of speed they had there at the end. We got to come out and block a little better and tack tackle a little better, or uh, um, you know, six points makes me nervous. We were talking before the game about your defense and and the way they've turned a new leap in the playoffs. I mean, is this shocking you? Twenty points given up, even through the first half of the championship game in the playoffs. No, it's not surprising because I know what they can do when they think about it. You know, it's not it's not about coaching during the game. It's about the kids and getting it done and everything. And that's what it is right now. It's the kids getting it done. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. All right, guys, you're here at six-point lead, but, boy, would he like a few more points on that board. Thank you very much, Terry. And we are getting ready for the second-half kickoff. Frostproof leading six to nothing. Bill Pierstorff played for three years as an offensive tackle under fame coach Ferris Brandon. And he graduated from Frostproof only in 1989. He's only 28 years of age. He was part of that team in 89 that won a playoff game for Coach Brandon. Frostproof has some state championships, 1974 and 1992. Looking for their third. They also have four runner-ups. This is their fourth state championship in the 90s. They finished runner-up in 91 and runner-up in 96. The big man, the biggest kicker you will see in the Florida Finals, 305-pounder, gets things underway. And the kick is away, fielded at the 15-yard line, coming up to the 20, Josh Amos to the 35-yard line. So Trinity Christian out of Jacksonville will take over first and 10 from their own 35, and Brady, I'm sure they heard a little bit from Coach Dormady in the locker room after that first half performance. Yeah, I mean, he just wants the guys to settle down, eliminate the mental mistakes, the penalties and those type of things, the, the, the fumbled snaps that, that allow you to get in bad situations. Come back out, refocus, do what you've been doing all season long, and you'll take home a state title. Willie Jackson now lines up on the defensive line after the kickoff, big number 73. His missed extra point could prove to be costly later on. We will find out it's 6 nothing Frostproof as we start the third quarter. Handoff, Chuck Scott tripped up after a gain of about four yards. And that was the big man who kicked off as well, Willie Jackson, in there on the stop. See, this is what I like offensively for Trinity Christian. Go back to the set that you run better than 50, 60, 70 percent of the time throughout the season, and that's the quarterback under center, the double wing, and the one fullback. There you see Gus Scott's stats so far. He's been the workman for them at the running back position. But get in your 
your base set, what your kids understand are most familiar with. Scott was up to 94 yards at one point, went backwards for 21 yards at the end of the first half. Here's a handoff, and Mike Papa not going very far. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage plus a yard or two. It'll be third down and four. And that's normally a guy in Karan Bracey that would may have that carry in that situation. They have the unbalanced line and run Bracey behind him. Uh, and, and, and normally Bracey, a guy who's had over 1,400 yards and 19 touchdowns, now goes into the game maybe for blocking purposes, but that was a guy that would normally be his carry, but with a, with a bad foot, a broken foot, he just can't give him enough push. Reisinger lined up behind the quarterback. Here's Gus Scott in motion. Scott takes the carry, cuts it back, first down to midfield. A good out of Terry Norvell. Okay, guys, you mentioned Bracey got in the game, and Brady it looked just like that for blocking purposes. Number two on that play really sealed off his man, and he pushed him straight forward. That's the key. You can go straight and play a little defense. You don't have to plant if you don't have the football. I think that's the problem in terms of not carrying the ball for Bracey. Yeah, at the running back position, you have to make so many different cuts. On top of that, you got people falling on you. At the defensive position, you're making a tackle, and there's rarely somebody falling on you and on your hurt foot. So that's probably why they just kept him there on defense and in for blocking purpose. Here is the handoff up the middle. High Smith, Fred High Smith stripped up after a good gain on first down. Call it a gain at six. It'll be second and four. And I think Coach Dormany went in and challenged his offense and said, okay, we're going to come out and make it simple. We're going to come out and challenge you to get more physical up front, protect the ball, and do what you do best. And they're starting to have some positive gains on first down. And, and all, really, if you keep it simple sometimes in big games, that's almost the best, best way to go. Coach Pierce said he was nervous about just six points, and rightfully so. Here's a run on the left side. Open it just got to the 25, knocked out of the 22. Big game for the senior tailback. Really was, and it's all a beneficiary of what they've done before that play, and that meaning whatever you do leading up to that, they're pounding it, they're pounding. Here he goes in motion. Gets a good block from Reisinger, the kickout block. that makes one guy miss right there, Gus Scott and he's into the secondary. Frostproof has so many defenders around the line of scrimmage that I think Trinity, which is a little bit bigger than Frostproof size-wise across the line, just needs to line up and play smash mouth football. And I think that's what Coach Norman talked to him about at halftime. We're gonna do it, we're gonna keep it simple, we're gonna pick three run plays that we run well, that we all know are blocking assignments, and we won't have the mental mistakes. We're gonna come out, we're gonna drive it right down the field on them. And that's what he's telling them right there. That's what he's telling. You saw Coach Pierstorp, and he was fired up. He called timeout, and he's still—he's not that far away from his playing days. And he's got a lot of energy there on the sidelines. And he is not happy with what has transpired here in the first couple of minutes of the second half. And I've been an assistant coach before, and I know what that is. And you're, you're going to get an earful if you're an assistant coach. That coaches have assistant coaches that are there that take the year for even if it's not their fault and that was the one getting the run of it well hopefully it's not the newly married coach maddox hopefully he gets a little break one of the assistants if you didn't catch this in the first half got married earlier this morning on the morning of his championship game here's a penalty before the snap wow. coach maddox the newlywed but he's not thinking right now about nuptials. He's got a football game that he's concentrating on. Yeah, and that's, uh, he kind of got a good deal out of that bargain. Got to get married in the morning, get it, uh, kind of get it over with, go win a football game or try to win a football game and then go on a honeymoon. That's a pretty good weekend. That's not bad. Here's the handoff to Highsmith, and he is stacked up a pile of bodies at the 27-yard line. It'll be second down and long after the five-yard penalty. And listen to me, the, the single guy saying, get it over with. Right, I mean, <laughs> there's probably people right there. What is he talking about? But there was another penalty after the timeout right there by Trinity Christian that cost him, uh, you know, field position again. And that's what you don't want to see happen. We saw it happen way too many times in the first half. Trinity Christian right now is shooting themselves doubly more times than once in the foot. Double barrel action. Here's a fumble, and the ball is loose. Frostproof says they have the football, and they do. Wow. Trinity Christian was just marching down the field. Brady, you mentioned the one penalty, and now a fumble. And all the breaks so far going the Bulldogs, and they're making their own break. Yes, they are. And here's one right here. Good snap. And, 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 and 
when you pull linemen in front of the quarterback, sometimes uh, he doesn't have a chance to get back to the ball. They were going to run a little trap play, it looked like, or a kick out by Gerard Ross. Loses the snap. And Coach Pearsorp. He's happy all the time. Yeah, he's the beneficiary of it. He called a timeout. After the timeout, he got a penalty and a fumble, and uh, Trinity really needs to tighten up. Here's the fumble right back. D.J. Hudson loses the ball. He might have given it right back to Trinity Christian. There is a flag down on the field. And no signal yet from the referee as to who regained possession. Looks like it's going to be Trinity Christian ball. Here's the call. The hold a light and climb. We recover the fumble. Yeah, the Trinity Christian defense has been there all game long and played well. They gave up the one big pass play, which was a heck of a play by Hatfield. But watch right here. Let's see if Hudson ever gets the ball. And there it is right there. The quarterback, Hatfield, opened up. He didn't open up deep enough, and he wasn't able to get back there. He had to struggle to get the ball back to C.J. Hudson. And because of that, it caused a fumble. The back-to-back -back fumbles and now another penalty. Yeah, what happened on that is it was, the quarterback was reversing out, and instead of opening all the way back to his running back, he opened straight back, and then by the time he tried to get back to C.J. Hudson, who was on an outside track, it forced a uh, fumble, and he was unable to get a good quarterback to running back exchange. Head coach Dorman, will take it. And I'm not so sure this Trinity defense thing coming in this game with a little chip on their shoulder. I mean, all we've talked about is Trinity's offense, and Trinity's offense, and then you talked about C.J. Hudson on the cross loop on offense, and all he has done. Trinity's defense has said, hey, you know, we play football too, and they've been very strong today except for the one big play really dominating that running game of cross loop. Pitch back to Gus Scott on first and five. Scott is corralled at the 18 yard line. Good open field tackle right there by Michael Rose. Very good tackle. I mean, Gus Scott, 12 yards to carry almost for the season, knows how to make guys miss. And this guy, Michael Rose, from his outside linebacker position, what? Fights off the block and then wraps up. Trinity's best running back. That's an outstanding tackle and an outstanding effort right there by Michael Rose. Second down and short. Call it second and a long three. Gus Scott is taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Great tackle by Julian Watson. He had a strong first half as well. Both of these defenses are getting after. Look at him get off the ball. Slicing through the defense right there and making the tackle. Timing up the snap count just right. And then what was a first and five ends up being a third and six for Trinity. Brady, these are the games you probably used to love to play in wet conditions, get all muddy, hard, smash mouth football straight ahead. These are great football conditions. Third down, they have to get to the 14, back to throw, firing for the end zone for Scott. Oh, my goodness. Knocked away on a great defensive play by Shannon Benton. Benton saved a tackle in the first half, and he might have saved his second touchdown here in the second half. Outstanding play by the junior, Shannon Benton, right here. They tried to get Gus Scott on the wheel route. Watch him go up. Look at that athletic ability. Would have been a surefire touchdown. Again, trying to get the wheel route to Gus Scott. Number three, and watch, right there, goes up, almost comes down with it, which would have been a huge play. But again, he's made two big-time plays, and this kid right here is just a junior Bulldog fan. Trinity Christian going for it on fourth down and six. Throwing for the end zone, incomplete. Overthrows his receiver intended for Robbie Tebow, the tight end. And on the downs, it'll turn over to Frostproof. The defense holds again. Terry Norvell, what do you have for us? I'll tell you what I've got. One of the great corporate sponsors of the FHSAA is the United States Marine Corps. I've rounded up Sergeant Edwards from the Marine Corps. And, Sergeant, tell us about the program where the Marines will bring in high school teachers and, and kind of train them on what to, what the Marines are all about. Well, we're bringing in high school teachers up to Paris Island, which is one of our recruit training depots. And we go and show them basically how we create Marines out of the kids that they teach in school. We go and bring them in, they get to see the training, the crucible, see basically how we transform them in each aspect. A short game there by Frostproof on first and ten. And guys, quickly, this is actually directed toward Brady. Talking to Sergeant Edwards a moment ago, 
and he cleared up something. Brady, you've been asking why they don't, they, the Marines, don't answer your uh, all your applications you keep sending in. Remember the motto, Brady, the Marines. They're looking for a few good men. <laughs> I'm not tough enough to be in the Marines. I'll, I'll admit that. I mean, those guys are tough. They do more before 6 a.m. than I do at by 11 a.m. I mean, those guys are up too early, so. <laughs> Take it out. There he is. I'm not tough enough for that. <laughs> tough enough to play here on Florida Field. That's not too bad. Here's a sack and trying to throw the ball away in Catfield. And we're going to get an intentional grounding on top of the sack. Credit the sack to Robbie Tebow, the intended receiver on that last fourth down play. And there's the intentional grounding call. Yeah, this is one you got to eat as a quarterback right here. Hatfield. Goes back, takes his five-step drop. I think he was setting up the screen to the left side and probably should have just held on to it. He will take the penalty, probably half a, half the distance to the goal line since it's inside the 20, uh, setting up a long, long third down. But you know, again, this game is very is headed towards a one play makes a difference game. As you said about the extra point, both these defenses are playing inspired football. Defense is about emotion and about rallying to the ball and about being aggressive. Both these defenses have done it. Trinity has just been dominating on defense. Spots down and the penalty will set up a third down in a bundle. It'll be at the seven yard line to call it third and 25 as Frostproof needs to get the ball to the 32 yard line. You talked about maybe being a difference of one play. Well, right now, this could be a one-touchdown lead for Trinity Christian had it not been for Shannon Benton. They've been touchdown so far in each half. Number 21, certainly the MVP thus far for the Bulldogs. On third and long, Frostproof content to run the ball, and they get it to the 10-yard line, and they'll punt it from there. Yeah, and, you know, his brother, who's the senior, leading the team in interceptions, yet the junior's trying to get some attention here in the state championship game today. So Trinity should come out of this with pretty good field position. They held them back in there after the penalty. So they will have Frostproof will have to punt it out of their own end zone. So Trinity Christian will get good field position as they hang on to the football. Wow. Andy Pillar with an outstanding kick. Thanks Josh Amos back to his own territory. He fumbles and recovers. Verlin Dormany has to be wondering what's going on with my team today. Penalties and turnovers and fumbles. This one they get back. Oh my First and ten. Oh my goodness, Gus Scott. If I was tough enough to play on this field, I never took a shot like this. Watch Gus Scott right here come in there. Bam! That's a decleater. <laughs> Holy goodness of mighty. That was a shot right there. That, that shouldn't even be legal. Caused his own teammates to fumble and get him so hard. Well, he was so excited. He couldn't believe it. It was like shock waves off that shot. But uh, James Gaines did bounce back up to his credit. But Gus Scott. Trying all he can to lead this Trinity team. And now we're starting to see some sticky going on here in the second half as this team starts to wind down a little bit. Watch for Gus Scott offensively as well. There he is, number three, carrying left side in front of Scott and Fred High Smith clearing some space. Finally knocked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Good run by Gus Scott as he tries to get the Trinity Christian crowd here from Jacksonville pumped up. I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. It's effort right here, it's all effort. Pretty good blocking at the point of attack, okay? You'll see right here, good seal block there. Everybody's got their man, but there, he makes one guy miss, bounces off another tackle, and watch that. Little stiff arm move, you can't coach that, it's so good. Gets the first down. Gus Scott playing with a lot of heart, a lot of emotion. He's shoulder the load today for the Conqueror offense. Big number three. Scott was nearing 100 yards in the first half. He's now to 123 in the game. Pitch back to Justin Reisinger. Reisinger battling for a couple of yards on the left side. I'll tell you one thing. These two defenses, if you're one of those people that believe defense wins championships, well, that's where it's going to be won today, I think. You know, there's so much with the offense, and offense is so sexy and fun to watch and puts up a lot of points, and that's what fans like. So if you like good hitting, good sound, well-coached defenses, you got two of the best we've seen all year long right here in the state championship game. Second down and eight from the 30-yard line. This is Gus Scott again. Scott fumbles the ball, recovered by... Crossproof had a shot at it, and they didn't fall on it. They tried to pick it up and run. Andy Piller had a shot at it. The initial hit was made 
by Walter Clayton to cause the fumble, and now they unpile the bodies, and we'll see who has it. I want to take a look at that again. I believe it might have been, not to, you know, God discredit you there, my man Todd. I believe it was James Gaines trying to get back in. If we could take a look at that again, I'd like to see that. James Gaines, number 13, I believe was the man. Watch now. Here he comes outside. No, you were right. It was number one, Walter Clayton. And then, I just discredited myself. Well, I don't know. There's a, another guy who had a hand in there, too. We couldn't quite see his number, but Pillar's got a ball on that ball. Number 12, Andy Pillar. Yeah, you're right. It was Walter Clayton, the senior linebacker, making a big play right here. Watch. Sticks his hand in there on the front side and strips it out. And Trinity again. One too many fumbles. But very fortunate to get it back. Very fortunate. So now it's third down and long and getting stacked up on the left side. Clayton in there again. Killer was there. Also pot coming off the bottom of the pile. Chuck Thornton getting a play on defensively, number 41. And Frostproof's defense is making a lot of believers out of the team from Jacksonville right now. Yeah, they really are. And, and again, they get, they're fortunate to get in situations of third and fourth and long. And that's caused by the big play made right by there by that man, the play before, causing the fumble. We're going to take a timeout right now. Coach Pierstorf running out there with a lead of 6-0 and his opposition facing a fourth down situation. 3-20 left in the third. It's 6-0 Bulldogs. in a lifetime can you experience a day unlike any that's ever come before. On January 1st, 2000, Tampa Bay kicks off a new millennium of football history with Outback Bowl 2000. Don't miss this high-scoring shootout featuring the country's two best quarterbacks as record-breaking Heisman candidate Drew Brees of Purdue airs it out against Georgia's high-flying Quincy Carter, kicking off a new millennium's first football game ever, Outback Bowl 2000. It will never happen this way again. Back in Gainesville, Florida field. Fourth down play for Trinity Christian. Trailing 6 nothing, trying to set up the screen. The throw is incomplete. Incomplete pass. They let all the rushers come in. And they throw it incomplete. Frost group holds once again defensively. 
Outstanding stop right there again by Frost Bruce Stevens. Watch now, Gerard Ross is going to try to set up the screen to his back right there, right there, but he just keeps drifting, keeps drifting, waiting for him, and he never comes open. Actually, it might have been intended, excuse me, for Robbie Thibault. Thibault, excuse me, number 21, but regardless, they had it snuffed out pretty good. The front line of defense for Frost Bruce was in the quarterback's face, and the safeties and the linebackers were at the screener, so it really never had a chance. Trinity Christian is winning the game in terms of yard game, but they're losing the game on the scoreboard because of costly mistakes throughout this game. Frostbrook with what with one big pass from Tommy Hatfield to Larry Burnett early in the first half has a six-nothing lead that is held up into the later stages of the third quarter. And this, is, I believe, is going to be a delay of game penalty, which is a little bit hard to believe after the stoppage of play change of possession. This is the best field position Frost Bruce had in a while. And uh, yeah, they need to do something on offense, let those defensive boys get a rest over there. Because you just get a feeling, as long as it's a one-score game with Gus Scott, Trinity might have a chance to break something. First down, handoff to C.J. Hudson. He has been bottled up throughout this game. This is a Trinity Christian defense that we told you a little bit earlier held Marlon Brown out of Williston to and the rest of his teammates, the negative three yards rushing, they're almost doing about the same thing to C.J. Hudson, an injury on the offensive line for Frostproof. Hank Johnson is down on the ground. 350-pound senior, right tackle. Hey, Trinity's defense has played outstanding today. I mean, and we talked about Frostproof's defense coming up with two huge stops here in the third quarter, having to start on their side of the field. Trinity's defense has done a good job also of this half of keeping the field position battle in their favor. And, and sometimes it takes one big play and it swings back the other way, but this may be one where Trinity's defense has got to step up and not only cause a turnover, but maybe a turnover for a score, a scoop and score. So, uh, you know, you look at those things and the way it's been out, it's been a defensive struggle, and who would have ever thought Trinity Christian's offense would be, with two, uh, two minutes and 53 seconds left to go in the third quarter, be held scoreless. There you see the tackle Johnson moving off to the sideline. Yeah, that is unheard of when you see that they've scored at least 50 points in every one of their regular season games with one exception. <laughs> Talked about defense as Trinity Christian with a solid defensive performance today. On the other sideline, Frostproof doing even better, and they're doing so without their number one tackler, who is right there, Eric Knight. He got injured last week. Now look at his hand. He's got a cast on his left hand, which he broke in the regional finals, played with the broken hand, but then he broke his leg last week. And he is on the sidelines, hoping his defense can throw up a shutout. They may need to to win the championship, leading 6-0. Hand off, opening, left side, gain of five yards on second down and nine. That's Grover Benton. He had a big game in the semifinals. There's a nice run for Frost. Boots they haven't used in a, haven't seen in a while. Good job blocking up front. There you go. They're going to have a little kick out trap play, guard trap, and Benton. I like him. He hits it up in there pretty hard. Saw the hole. Good positive gain. Haven't seen much of him in there. Spelling C.J. Hudson at tailback. This is a big third down for Crossroads, and that is third and five, so it's very makeable. If you can pick it up, so you'll have the ball pretty much going into the fourth quarter with the lead against Trinity. Needing to get to the 43-yard line. Hatfield throws incomplete behind his intended receiver on that play. Julian Watt also in front of Grover Benton. Either way, it's incomplete, and Andy Piller, who's done a great job punting the ball out of harm's way, back there to punt once again for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Justin... Rising, getting pressure on the quarterback. He probably threw that one just to count before he wanted to. Uh, he had the receiver open, but pressure again from that Trinity defense. They, they just bring him from all over the place. Hiller once again to punt. Amos back, fields a low line, drive at his own 30. Up to the 40, and he is upended. He had a lot of running room if he's not upended. A late flag coming in right yeah. near the tackle. Yeah, block in the back. Clearly a block in the back. You can see the Frostproof staff going nuts because the ref didn't exactly go for the hanky right away. He kind of took his time. But I believe it was a block in the back on Solano. And we'll see. Michael Rose for Frostproof finds defensive play on special teams. 
And again, there's another mistake. Yep. There is another mistake. And we'll get the call right here. Flip and a run back on blue. First down. He blocked him from behind, which is clipping. And that is another mistake for Coach Dormany there on the left side of your screen. Eight penalties. Numerous fumbled snaps. Failed fourth down conversions, all kinds of stuff. Just you know, it's hard to win championships when you got all that going against. You. It all adds up to a deficit. Back to the single wing they go. No quarterback in this set, and they snap it directly to Gus Scott. Scott gains seven yards on first down. Terry Norvell. Okay, guys, talking a moment ago to some Trinity coaches, uh, the Conquerors are having so much problems putting a drive together, sustaining a drive without a penalty or a fumble. If they have to, put this in your playbook, Brady, and store it for a little bit later in the game. A possible power sweep one way end around, maybe to try and get it all on one play, as opposed to an 8, 9, 10 play drive, which they haven't been able to put together throughout the ballgame, guys. Well, you're exactly right, Terry, and I said that earlier, that this may come down to one big play. You don't leave any of your tricks in the bag when you're playing for a state title. On second down, there's the first carry of the game by Karan Bracey. We talked about his injury before, and check that, that was actually... Mike Papa, who had the carry. Papa is playing in the place of Bracey. Bracey's only been in for a few plays in this game, and when he's been in, he's been in as a blocker. This is a guy who had over 1,400 yards during the regular season in the playoff. There's a good first down, getting back that penalty yard that you got on the clip. Now with the quarterback in, Gerard Ross takes the shotgun snap, and penalty flags go down as Ross is able to gain a couple on a scramble. Oh, this could be another penalty on Trinity. Mm. You know, this may be a time to call that play. As Terry said, you're getting late in the third. And and if you've got some big play, trick plays, you know, Trinity hasn't needed a lot of those plays this season. They've pretty much been able to do what they do and dominate. But right now, mentally, they are just, uh, they are not getting, getting it done. And it's too many mistakes. And... Also good defense by Frost as well. First down. Absolutely too many mistakes to win a state championship game. That's what those Conqueror players are thinking about right now with 51-6 left in the third quarter, trailing 6-0. Uh -huh. But great teams overcome adversity. And if you're going to be a great team and be a state champion, you have to find a way to overcome these mistakes. First down and long, Gus Scott is here. There's the big guy, Willie Jackson, also getting some help from Daryl Wright. It'll be second down and long. There's the big fella. He can kick it. <laughs> he can tackle it, and he can move down the line for a big fella. 305 pounds, but he moves really well laterally across that defensive line. He's made several tackles down the line of scrimmage from his tackle position. Watch him right here. He comes in. He's trying to get a hook block right there. He fights off the block, gets down the line of scrimmage, and makes the tackle. That was an outstanding job by Willie Jackson, bending off the block and making the tackle. Here is the reverse on the handoff. Inside reverse, and it's Justin Reisinger going nowhere. Grover Benton with the big stick, and that'll be the final play of the third quarter. So, we have the possibility of a big upset here in the Class 2A championship game. One quarter of action remaining. In Frost for six, Trinity Christian, nothing. Is there an underdog in you? Is there a stubborn fool in you? Is there a screaming child in you? Be right with you. Winter blues got you down? Nothing lifts the spirit like Mazda's year-end clearance. Right now, get 1500 cash back or incredibly low financing on a new Mazda 626. Mazda's year-end clearance. It's just what you needed. Most effective therapy. Everyone has their own idea of a hero. Magic Johnson, Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
Mr. Neal. My hero, Gloria Stefan. Martin Luther King. Mr. Hope. These are teachers, but to the kids they've reached, they're heroes. They've given them hope. They've given them choices. They've changed their lives. Well, the children are the heroes. The most fulfilling thing is watching a child succeed. I just like to help them make the dreams come true. Teachers have the power to wake up young minds, to be heroes, to make a difference. Reach for that power. Teach. If you want to make an impact on our future, call 1-800-45-TEACH. Mr. Wilkins. Mr. Eisenhower. Mr. Adler. Be a teacher. Be a hero. Dawn breaks. It's the first day of the year 2000. Citizens are preparing for something very different, something not possible just 24 hours before. On this, the first day of the new millennium, they will be going to the 54th annual OurHouse.com Florida Citrus Bowl. See the Florida Gators take on Night Bright Michigan State, New Year's Day at 1 p.m. Get tickets now while they last. For complete bowl information, visit FCSports.com. Honey, would you get me some ice cream? Ice cream? Yeah. Thank you. Some things you just can't do without. It happens every night, all across America. Class 2A championship heads to the fourth quarter. Frostproof leading the third-ranked Trinity Christian Conquerors 6 to nothing. Log on to SportsChannelFlorida.com for the best in Florida sports. Send email to your favorite announcers. Link to play favorite Florida's professional, uh, professional collegiate teams, that is, and participate in interactive polls and chats. Log on today, Florida's best interactive site, SportsChannelFlorida.com. Here's the stack defensively. And C.J. Hudson can't get it going rushing, but here he is defensively coming up with a sack for the Bulldogs. C.J. Hudson runs over a blocker to get to the quarterback. Watch this effort right here now. He's going to go back to pass to where Ross is. He's looking, and from the backside, there you see him. He just ran over Reisinger, the fullback. Hudson did. He said, well, if I can't get it on the ground on offense, I'll get it on defense. And a huge sack right there on third down for Frostproof. And I'll tell you this, with the field position being what it is, if the Bulldogs were to knock a touchdown in right here, they're going to get good field position. Great kick by Andy Davidson. Sends Clayton all the way back into his own territory. Walter Clayton is taken down at the 40-yard line. Great hit by Robbie Thibault. Outstanding punt, but a good return. Almost outkicked his coverage, I would say, but an outstanding punt right there for Trinity, but a good return, and you look at Frostproof now, they're starting inside the 40 of the Conquerors, and they have not, you know, in this second half, they have not had this good a field position. See if they can get something going. Look look at the total yards. Frostproof with 69. 59 of those coming on one play. Terry Norvell, you have an injury update for us? Okay, big Hank Johnson for the Bulldogs back in the lineup. He came out a series ago, kind of rolled his left knee, told me uh, a little ginger, but he's fine. He's going to play. He's back in the lineup right now for Frostproof. Big fella back in there on that offensive line, and they need that down the stretch here. Hatfield throwing down the middle. Benton is overthrown. Grover had a step, but the pass was overthrown. I'll tell you one thing. I, I, in, in, this is a, a well-designed play, and, and Hatfield just missing, but... All day long, Trinity Christian has given the middle of the field there. And, and because of that front seven and the pressure that Hatfield had, he's really not been able to do anything as far as getting it down there except for the one big play. But right there, that could have been a dagger for Coach Dormany if they were able to hit that one. Second down and 10. The Bulldogs, with the exception of that one play, have a total of 10 yards gained offensively the entire game. But the one big strike has them on top, 6-0, looking for more. Hatfield throws, complete and incomplete. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Donald Rose was over there. Well, that would have been a huge catch, too, if you had had a third and short. He's going to run a little curl route right here. Here's Hatfield. 
Again, under duress, under pressure, man in his face, getting hit as he throws it, getting it there on time, but a good play right there by Josh Amos, but give Hadfield credit for getting that one off, although I think there's a flag on the play. Watch this hit. He gets hit right as he throws it, so he couldn't really get... That's all oh, arm right there. White. We'll be second down. That's the first big penalty of the game against Frostproof. Trinity Christian has been hampered by numerous penalties. The Frostproof gets a big holding penalty from the spot of the infraction will be an 18-yard penalty. And Trinity will take any penalties they can get in their favor. What you want to do if you're Frostproof here now is you don't want to give up field position. The ball's still at the middle of the field, and then this defense struggles. If you don't pick up the first down, you want to make sure you pin Trinity back in into a goal line. And that is not what you want right there. Big sack by Mike Pop, but the freshman middle linebacker coming in untouched. Another loss of yards, and the Bulldogs are going in the wrong direction. Yeah, that is that, that, that to me is a little bit, being a little bit too greedy. You're in a second and 25 situation. You're going to put your quarterback in a five-step drop right here and watch. Papa, the center is unable to come off and pick him up. And Papa gets the sack, so you lose another 10. And you've got to think about field position. You've got to think about your defense is playing awfully well. And now you're in almost, I don't even know how far it is. Well, how far is that? Goodness gracious, we need a telescope. That is 35 yards to go. They need to get the ball all the way down to the 30-yard line of Trinity Christian. You know, but if you run it on that play and you run it on the next play, not only do you eat clock, but you have a chance to punt it from midfield. D.J. Hudson goes nowhere. Hudson has been stopped the entire game. A guy who has never had a game less than 100 yards with one exception. That came this year against Cardinal Mooney, and he's got nine yards on 10 carries today against Trinity Christian. Nobody's been able to stop him except for this team and Cardinal Mooney once earlier this year. A guy who's only behind Emmett Smith and the Florida Player of the Year, the Dairy Farmers Florida Player of the Year this year, Willie Green from Kissimmee Osceola, second career rushing, third on that list in the state of Florida all time, is that guy, C.J. Hudson, who's been stopped all day long. John Amos brings the punt back for about a 10-yard return. So Trinity Christian will set up first and 10 from their own 41, trailing 6-0 with 914 to go, and this team from Jacksonville, still searching for a drive without mistakes. Yeah, they're searching for a drive, and again, you've done it all season long. You've knocked off some strong, strong opponents. You get to the championship game, which is a goal of Coach Dormney from the outset, from the time that you went to spring ball way back last May, and now we're going to find out who wants it the most in the last nine minutes of the game. First and ten. 14 to go in the championship. Trinity Christian in the dark uniform. Gus Scott has been their main man all day. Scott kicks it outside. Scott gets taken down from behind by a guy who's made huge plays defensively all game. Shannon Benton, but not before first down yardage. And they had everybody bunched up in the middle that time. Frostbrook did anticipating an inside run. And Gus, uh, Gus Scott right here using his athletic ability and his great speed outruns the defense to the corner and once again shannon benton makes a huge tackle to avoid even a bigger game but an outstanding run right there by gus scott using his speed to get outside 905 to go in the ball game trinity christian ranked number three in class 2a they've knocked off number two and number one they hand off up the middle reisinger taken down by cj hudson on a good tackle when Reisinger looks like he might get, might have a big game. Yeah, and here's a guy in Reisinger that averaged almost a 10 and a half yards to carry, 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns. So they've done a good job bottling him up. Obviously, with the injury to Bracey, he's been gone. It's been mostly the Gus Scott show on offense for Trinity Christian, and he's yet to produce any points, but they're on the move here. And just need to sustain the drive mentally. They know what they can do physically, sustain the drive mentally. Reisinger with 27 yards on 10 carries. And this time, a little busted play. Gerard Ross will take it himself, and he goes down. That is a mental mistake right there, and you'll see it. Good play by the Frostproof defense, but Gerard Ross was looking to hand a misdirection play back underneath. And I believe the back goes too quick. Watch right here. Okay, he's going to fake there, and now he's going to turn and want to hand it to number nine. Either... Number nine right there for Trinity. Larry Solano was not getting the ball, or it was a miscommunication in the huddle. One way or the other, that was a busted play. Give Bobby Lamb credit for the sack. 6-1 junior. 
Number 61, and now it's third down and 10. 7.45 and counting remaining. Reisinger up the middle. Justin Reisinger tripped up just shy of the first down by about two or three yards. Certainly, Trinity Christian will go for it here. They've been going for it all afternoon in short yardage. Yeah, they have to uh, go for it. But let's look at it right here. Coming right at you. Just a fullback dive, fullback belly play. And if he keeps his feet, he's got the first down, but he just got tripped up. That's the most yards. Our most space Rising has had to run in all day, so he's probably a little surprised. It's been tough running for him, number 19 today, Justin Rising is the senior. They need to get to the 44, call it fourth and three. Here's Just Scott looking for the first down, has the first down, pushed out of bounds. Trinity Christian keeps the drive alive on a fourth and three run by Just Scott. Yeah, that's just outstanding speed, knowledge of the game, knowing where the first down marker is, and good blocking on the left side, on the inside of that line. Here you'll see him come in motion. They're going to hand him on the sweep, the quick sweep right there. He sees color, which is opposite color in front of him. That means bounce it outside. And we used to coach running backs. We used to talk about if you see the opposite color that Coach Pierce's defense has right there, the white jersey, you run away. You look in the hole, there's a different color, you bounce it outside. If there's no color, you go up inside. Sounds like it's logical. Handoff up the middle. Highsmith has had a carry in a while. Fred Highsmith, the senior, gets a couple of yards. It'll be second down. Under seven minutes to go in this game, and with not a lot of scoring, this could be the drive that determines the two-way champion. Well, both teams have two timeouts left, and that could play into a factor if Trinity were unable to punch it in here. The cross proof needs one, one more strong stand right here. Gus Scott, he has been the workhorse. He goes over the right side. Ball is loose, but the officials say it was caused by the ground. The fumble was caused by contact with the ground. So Scott does not turn the ball over. It'll be third down and three. Well, Gus Scott's been sharing the load this entire season with Reisinger and Bracey. All of them, almost an equal amount of carries. That's hard to do. I mean, 138, 148, 141. I mean, it's hard to, I don't care what offense you run, to keep three guys that happy perfectly. But today, the big fella, number three, Gus Scott, is carrying the load and trying to will this offense to one touchdown. He was averaging coming into this game, Brady, 11 carries a game, 11 and a half. When you talk about the three running backs, today he has 27 carries. And you can see he was winded there after that last run. He is standing almost by himself at midfield with his hands on his hips. And Trinity Christian will call a timeout. We're going to take a timeout as well. 5.45 remaining in the 2A championship. Come on back and find out the winner as we continue right here on Sports Show. As you can see, our filtered cigarette sales have increased by 15%. Now make no... guys are killing me 1,000 people a day come on give me a break there's only one of me you know slow down a little bit just do half I can handle 500 people a day come on okay I guess I'm talking to myself death how are you today um, I'm not so good death I'm a little tired Funny, death, so am I. I'm carrying a thousand coughing souls across the river Styx every day. Funny enough, me too. Oh, really, death? You want to know why? Because we're the same person! Security? Every day, over 1,000 people die from a tobacco-related illness. And every day, the tobacco industry just ignores them. That's very impolite. As the American military gets smaller, who will be there to answer the call? They will. They're the National Guard and Reserve, and they make up half of today's military forces. As an employer, you may be asked to support their mission. Remember, their response depends on yours. The Dolphins are primed for a Super Bowl run. And the best way to be a part of the action is by joining the Dolphin Club, the official fan club of the Miami Dolphins. With four levels of excitement, the Dolphin Club can help satisfy every Dolphin's needs. Each level will come with a shirt, special gifts, 
collectible. And every member receives 10% off at the Dolphins Pro Shop. Don't be left on the sidelines. To join, call 800-334-4005. That's 800-334-4005. Hi, I'm Butch Davis, head coach of the Miami Hurricanes. Hi, I'm Lee Lacan and women's golf coach for the Miami Hurricanes. Join us for a day of golf at Arvada's Western Hills Golf and Country Club for the University of Miami Golf Classic. All benefits go to the Student Athlete Scholarship Fund. This fund is used to provide scholarship money for over 200 deserving athletes. With the university being a private institution, the athletics department relies on donations from outside sources to help offset the cost of college tuition. Let's see off on Monday, January the 17th. Hope, Hope to, to see, see you there. there. The Tampa Bay Devil Rays and Sports Channel Florida will be partners into the millennium and beyond. Hi, I'm Joe McGrain. And I'm Dwayne Stant. Sports Channel is proud to be the exclusive cable home for Devil Rays baseball through the year 2012. This new agreement guarantees throughout the state of Florida the best coverage of Devil Rays baseball. Sports Channel will continue to provide year-round coverage of the club. And in the upcoming years, we'll bring you a minimum of 70 games per season. Sports Channel is 100% pure Florida sports. We are back. 545 remaining in the two-way championship. Big play here on third down and a long three. Call it third and four. Gus Scott with 27 carries in motion and a fumble on the quarterback sack. The ball is loose. Whose ball is it? Gerard Ross fighting with C.J. Hudson for the ball. And they are literally going at it on the ground. A little bit of wrestling. And who comes away with it? It looks like the quarterback is going to be called for possession. Big job, good job by Ross. Watch this defensive scheme from Coach B down at Frostburg. He takes his safety, Julian Watts, number three, lines him up at safety, or lines him up at nose tackle. He times the count up and hits the quarterback, Gerard Ross, before he can get it off. Watch, that is a safety playing nose tackle. That was a play there, a defensive scheme that they put in for a short yardage situation. He times the count up. And he's extremely, I mean, he is too quick for any center to block. And that is a huge play from Julian Watts, the senior. Says, Coach, put me on D-line. I'll make a play. I want to win this thing. Five minutes exactly remaining. Flags are thrown before the snap. We're going to get a delay of game. So fourth and 10 will become fourth and 15. Gerard it's Ross. Good ball. Mm. Delay again. Boy. Five yards. And Trinity has looked right in every adverse situation, whether it's a short yardage play, whether it was in the red zone on a second and long, they have looked rattled today. And I don't know if it's because Bracey hasn't been in there on offense or, or what, but they just have looked rattled this entire game. Fourth and 15, Ross back to throw. Has some time, fires, it is intercepted at the 20 yard line. Coming back to the 25 is James Gaines, the safety for the Bulldogs. What a performance on defense. I'm telling you, this secondary for Frostproof, James and Watts lining up there at nose, and we've already called the Benton brothers numerous times today. James James, he is a sophomore. A sophomore breaking on the ball right there on the corner route, making the interception and giving it back to the Bulldog offense. Gerard Ross on fourth down, trying to hit the corner route, trying to make something happen. And he is frustrated as this offense has been frustrated the entire day. Something that has never happened to this team through the course of the season. This interception on the year for games. That time, Grover Benton for the team lead. Big loss on first down as C.J. Hudson still can't find any running room. Terry Norvell, what do you have for us? Okay, if the Frostproof sideline is true to their word, they told me if they could gain possession with the lead, which they just did under five minutes, you're going to see nothing but power eye. Even though they have had trouble running the ball all day, they've challenged their offense. If we get it back with the lead, it's power eye to heck with the pass. Let's run the game out, kill the clock, and take a title home. Yeah, and what you don't want to do is what C.J. Hudson did right there. If you're going to power football, everything, the yards are going to be between the tackles right now. It's man on man. You don't want to bounce it outside. Here's Hudson taking the pitch, looking for room on the left side, still on his feet beyond the 30, maybe to the 31-yard line. That might have been Hudson's longest run of the game. Probably was, because he only had six yards on 11 carries prior to that carry. A good job of Hudson hanging on the ball as Trinity's already trying to strip it out of there. But they call a tall sweep, but it wasn't a tall sweep to get to the corner. Watch, he's going to come inside. 
toss sweep. He sees pressure outside, 21 showing his face. So he comes up inside. Gus Scott's going to make the tackle. And actually, number 21, Roddy Tebow, also makes the play. But CJ Hudson may only have 13 yards. But right now, if he wants to stay title, he has to protect the football. Third down and seven. Hudson up the middle, going nowhere. This Trinity defense, another outstanding stop. Gabriel White was in there, the nose guard. Well, this is a huge stop right here by Trinity because now they, they will not have to use any of their timeouts. They only have one left. White. Holding on cross proof, and they will decline that penalty and force a punt from Andy Piller. Now, not a great offensive series right there.